A pleasant evening, panelists, parents, and teachers. A warm welcome to the day's discussion topic, the future of learning for everyone, everywhere. The hot discussion topic, the sixth series under Craft World School Knowledge Hub is about the future of learners, teachers, learning resources, schools, system management, etc. In short, on the schools of the future and the future of schooling and the big changes ahead. One of the best Cambridge accredited schools in Kochi, Craft World School is an innovative attempt to work with children to inspire them to become self-reliant learners, nurture their talents and equip them with the skills and values that will empower them to become self-confident and well-rounded individuals. Craft World School provides every child access to happy and welcoming community focused on learning in a stimulating and rich environment. Craftians are molded to be lifelong learners, carrying forward the enriching and happy childhood nurtured within, the, within and outside the walls of Craft World School. I'm Bindu Menon, PR and training consultant of Craft World School and the moderator of this session. Our panelists for the day are Mr. M.P. Joseph, former additional chief secretary, government of Kerala, former the United Nations official, former district collector, Kochi, executive vice chairman of Bhavanam Foundation. Welcome, sir. We have a panelist, advocate Majid C.A., managing trustee, Craft World School, and executive director, Rams Business School. Mrs. Mridula Praveen, principal, Craft World School, Ms. Lasita Srilal, mother of Samast KG2, administrator at Light Breeze Infotech Private Limited. Ms. Padmaja Ram Govind, mother of Kashish of Grade 2, a maker. Ms. Nifia Shaki, mother of Ehan, Grade 2, and Ayman, Grade 3, architect and runs her own firm, Scale Architecture. Just a quick look at the agenda. We will start the session with a welcome speech, then to a felicitation speech by Advocate Sia Majid, followed by an overview on the webinar topic, then to speaker slot, followed by questions from the panel and the audience to the speaker, then to panelist feedback time, followed by vote of thanks and session wrap up. Now may I invite Ms. Meghna Susan Jacob, teacher with Craft Hall School to tell about the welcome address, please. Ms. Meghna. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings to dignitaries, guests, parents, and my dear colleagues. On behalf of Craft World School, it is my privilege and honor to welcome you all to our sixth webinar series, Craft World School Knowledge Hub, the future of learning for everyone, everywhere. Here we have our keynote speaker, MP Joseph Sir, a retired IAS officer of the 1978 batch Kerala cadre. Joseph Sir was until recently advisor in the rank of additional chief secretary that's in labor reforms and industrial relations. Government of Kerala and executive vice chairman of Bhavanam Foundation Kerala, a public sector non-profit company fully owned by the state government. With the utmost respect, we welcome you to the session. We are Thank eagerly, we are really, we are really eager to hear from you, sir. Next, I welcome our beloved parent fraternity, well wishers, and my colleagues to this empowering and encouraging session. Thank you for accepting our invitation. We really appreciate your cooperation and unreserved love for this institution sparing your time despite your busy schedules on this evening. Now, <clears throat> I, gladly, I gladly, gladly welcome our visionary managing trustee advocate C.A. Majid Sir and our vibrant principal, Ms. Mridula Praveen Ma'am, to this enlightening session. This is a testimony to the commitment you share for the welfare and education of our children. Therefore, it is my earnest prayer that whatever deliberations we embark on today will be constructive and truthful and will go a long way towards improving upon the already very high. Mm -hmm. 
but not the least i officially welcome ms bintu menon our pr and consultant to moderate excellently as always in this beautiful evening thank you and wish you all have a great time ahead thank you megna now may invite advocate majid ca managing trustee crawford school and executive director rams business school for his felicitation speech so over to your talk on the author civil servant and the un official and his works so very good very good evening uh it is my privilege to uh introduce mr mp joseph who is the chief guest here craftswell school is a cambridge approved school that is running from last 7 years that is from nursery to 7 grade 7 it is conducting with a unique structure entirely different from the uh, indian syllabus and the indian culture of education the management to in its inception wanted a separate stress free school and the children have their enjoyment in the school not only academics but they have to enjoy their own life and the society and the circumstances we started the school with a good aim now we uh, today for the webinar this is the sixth webinar we are conducting and today the webinar our chief guest is a very proud son of kochai and uh, he was the district collector of ernakulam and awarded the best district collector at his time and mr mb joseph as bindu menon said uh, he was acquainted with the united nations and uh, he was director of ilo for 7 years during his tenure as uh, uh, working in ilo the education to the downridden children of the laborers he was very keen on that point and uh, his 7 years of work in ilo that was a very uh, very much credible credible and it was internationally it was very uh, much uh, accomplished and mr joseph who was uh, additional chief secretary here apart from the uh, work here in kerala government he was associated with so many social activities also his uh, books and uh, uh, he published the books and uh, everywhere he was studied in a, uh, from i think it is from manchester university and uh, uh, very in depth knowledge in everything he is a visionary and uh, he is having so much of knowledge in the educational field i, I am i have occasion to hear so many speeches and uh, where he is delivering the speeches he is very attend very keen on the subject and uh, and uh, he is delivering the very points very uh, very points also that and uh, i uh, on behalf of the management we are very proud to uh, introduce you to this uh, august webinar in the evening thank you mr joseph and thank, thank you, you to all the parents and teachers assembled here thank you again thank you very much sir over to the topic the craft world knowledge series webinars focus on current issues needs and interest of education and the school community 
The discussions provide guidance on how the schools can best adapt to new ways of teaching, highlighting potential issues to consider, and sharing expert advice on how can schools address them. On this platform, the subject matter experts discuss their own experiences and share useful tools, resources, and approaches for teaching and learning. As the world we live in changes to embrace tech futures, how and what we teach in our education system will also be reshaped to keep up to, up to date by the growing demands of the 21st century. Technology is no longer a motivating factor when it comes to learning, it is a must. The concept of a teacher standing in front of a room full of students who listen and respond to direction is increasingly a thing of the past. The future would see students' learning spaces supersede the typical classroom and students to become partners or rather co-creators of their own learning. Classroom will coexist as physical spaces and online. Classrooms can be anywhere, anytime, and this context is being set as a base for today's discussion. Over to the speaker slot, please. Now may I invite Mr. M. P. Joseph, former additional chief secretary, government of Kerala, former the United Nations official, former district collector, Anakulam, executive vice chairman of Bhavanam Hello. Foundation to deliver the keynote address. A polyglot uh, who can use eight different languages with ease, Mr. M.P. Joseph has been a part of both IAS and IPS batches of Kerala Canada with a master's degree in HR from the Victoria University of Manchester, UK, and a master's degree in solid state physics from the QSAT. Mr. Joseph has served as mayor of Cochin Corporation District Collector and Executive Magistrate of the Anakulam District, Labor Commissioner, Government of Kerala, as MD of the Overseas Development and Employment Promotion Corporation, headed a team of the Ministry of External Affairs that contributed to the safe return of over one lakh Indians during the first Gulf War, Chief Technical Advisor and Project Director on Children's Issue International Labor Organization, served the longest stint there, 19 years. Executive Vice Chairman, Bhavanam Foundation, Kerala, advisor in the rank of additional Chief Secretary, Government of Kerala, and a book author, is author of My Driver Too Long and Other Tall Tales from a Post Paul Court Contemporary Cambodia. The book written with Homogamian touch, it delves deeply into the soul of Cambodia, a soul molded by the ancient culture of Angkor and shaped by the more recent excesses of Pol Pot was launched by Dr. Sashi Tharoor. Over to our keynote speaker, Mr. M. P. Joseph, please, sir. Thank you very much, uh, and I think that was a very long introduction that you gave. Uh, I'm pinching myself uh, to be sure that you're describing me. But anyway, thank you so much for your very kind words. Thank you also, uh, Advocate C.A. Maji, uh, a principal, Mithula, uh, and, uh, and, uh, 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 and uh, the, 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 I forget the name of the teacher who welcomed me. Thank you all so much. Meghna, sir. Uh, for me, Meghna. Sir, Meghna. Thank you, Meghna. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much, Meghna. For me, it's an honor, a delight, uh, and of course, a pleasure to be asked uh, and invited by Dr. Man Advocate Maji to deliver this uh, keynote talk on the future of learning. Uh, I was told, I was very happy, I was delighted, I was exultant when uh, uh, Advocate Maji told me that the school is based in Kaidara, uh, uh, in Koto Ali Panchai. Now, my roots are in Koto Ali Panchai. So I will slightly change uh, the, the, the phrase that Advocate Panji described me, that I'm a son of Cochin. I'm actually a son of Kotuali Panchayat. My grandfather, our family, is uh, from Valluali, which is in the neighborhood. Uh, uh, my father, of course, later shifted to Abdakulam, to Panapali, Bangalore. So, uh, but our roots are there. My roots are that I keep going there. Uh, there's even a, a group of my cousins staying there. Uh, they, they put up this name board saying Mena Cheri and Clay. So if you're passing by my family name is Mena Cheri. So, so I was delighted to know 
that uh, the school is the Craft World School International is based in Kaithara. Uh, when I was young and I used to come to, I studied in Chennai. And when I used to come on summer holidays to Walu Ali and stay there for a couple of weeks, it was the back of beyond. It was a, it was a place uh, uh, which, was, uh, which was very, very backward, very small. It had a narrow road, the road is still narrow. Uh, but you know, if there are a million buses and cars passing through that highway and it's National Highway 66 now per minute, we had to wait for you know, 30 minutes to see when a car passed through. So it sent a, how do I say, a freeze on of delight, a shiver of delight to know that there is an international school there uh, in the panchayats and so close to where I belong. So a particular thanks then for inviting me to speak uh, at a school, at, 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 a, at, a, at, a, uh, at an event like this, uh, in a school which is based in where I am from. Uh, the subject is the future of learning. And at least so I thought it was till yesterday, but it was only this morning when I read through Advocates Bhaji's email one more time more carefully, I realized the topic was much broader. It is the future of learning for everyone, everywhere. That's a, that's a very broad topic. And I suppose in a sense that it exemplifies the perspective with which the school is founded. And in a sense, I would say that the Craft World School at Kaidara exemplifies also the future of learning for everyone everywhere. Because in a place, which why do I speak of my childhood, even 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, Kotwali was still a very rural place. And to, and, to, and to set up a school there is I suppose uh, a step that shows that the future of learning is for everyone everywhere and that everywhere particularly. This is a school of which I believe has no bags, no homework, no bells, no monthly tests. And that is what I believe the future of education is going to be. If you look at uh, India, history of education in India, once upon a time in India, learning was certainly not for everyone. It was certainly not for, not everywhere. Learning was very, very exclusive. It was for the few, for the privileged. It was a very individualized form of learning, a personalized form of learning. The Gurukula system of the old, which I don't have to describe to you. One guru with a few of his students, four, five, six, coming and staying with him and learning as they lived with him. A sort of a modern education pod, if I may describe that. So that's how schooling was until the British came and Macaulay came and made education a thing of the masses, if not everywhere, but certainly for a lot of people. More and more people began to go to schools, uh, and everybody began, and, and more and more people began to learn. But with COVID, that has happened in the last two years, we have come half a circle, I believe. Whereas in the Gurukula system, the children went to the to the, to the home of uh, the, the guru and stayed with the guru. Now with COVID, the guru is coming to the home of the child. He's present in the child's room, in the child's bedroom. And the school is coming to the home. So we have, it's not a full circle, it's certainly half a circle, where from the child going to the guru's house, the guru is coming to the child's home and, 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 and teaching there and providing the inputs there. So the learning is changing. Uh, learning has also changed in another way. You know, I remember a joke when I was young, I think one of my uncles came and he, cracked this joke. He was, uh, the joke went something like this. He, he said that he asked one of his uh, nieces or nephews, five or six years old, whether the world was uh, flat or, or, or round. And the child said, it's round. And then the uncle asked that child, what is the proof that the world is round? And the child said, the proof, give me three proofs, is what the uncle said. And the child, the first proof, my mother said so. The second proof, my father said so. And the third proof, my teacher said so. Now, then you lived in a time when your mother, your father, and the teacher formed your entire world, the child's entire world, the student's entire world. And of course, of all the things, it was Mata, Pita, Guru, Devam. Devam comes at a later stage, but for the child, the mother, the father, and the guru, the teacher in the school, provided the entire universe of learning, the entire universe of teaching. Now, 
things have changed. Today, uh, if some of the parents here listening told uh, their daughter or son, six years old, something, the child wouldn't believe it. It would check up with the father, it would check up with the teacher. And then finally, it would go onto the internet to check up whether what the mother said, the father said, the teacher said is true or not, is correct or not. Things have changed today in teaching and in learning. If it is Mata, Pita, Guru, and Devam, God, today God is Google. God is the internet. And that's where all the information is. That is where all the knowledge is. And every child knows today, they are much more savvier than us, savvier than you and me. Every child knows how to get the sort of information that it wants on its subject, on the subject it has uh, learned. So things have changed. And when I said the curricular system, we have gone half a circle. In some things, we have gone a full circle. Today, the process of learning, the process of teaching is as it was back in the days of the curricula. It is individualized. It is, it, it is, uh, it is on a one-to-one -one basis between the child and the guru, the teacher. So we have gone back there for a full circle to a much more individualized form of learning, to a much more personalized form of learning. Only the difference is that whereas 2,000 years ago that individualized, personalized form of learning was for a few, five, six shishyas who were staying in the house of the guru, today it's for everybody. It's for everyone, everywhere. It's a, it's a form of mass, individualized, personalized form of learning that we have today. It's, an, it's a huge, massive scale. So today we live in a form of a global ashram where anyone can learn anytime, anywhere. And that is what more and more the future of learning is going to be for everyone and everywhere. The world has become one huge interconnected ashram of learning. The world has become one huge interconnected gurukula. It is not one guru who is teaching the child any longer, teaching me or you or anybody else. It's, it's 10 gurus, 100 gurus, 1,000 gurus, hundreds of thousands of gurus, millions of gurus all over the world are linked together and brings the knowledge to the child, uh, to, the, to the learner's footstep. So learning has changed, and that's the future of learning. And this will continue more and more. So in, in many things, the system has changed half away, and in others, it's changed, it's, com it's gone a complete circle. The sort of a child can pick up, a learner like me or anybody, can pick up what he wants to learn from the billions of billions of information, trillions of bits of information, on uh, any subject that is available in that world wide web. The world, or the God, the world, uh, uh, the world wide web today is, is, has become the teacher, uh, many gurus in one. And that is the future of learning, that's the future of learning for everyone, everywhere. It's going to be single, it, it is going to be. I hope you hear me again. There was an interruption. No, it's fine. Okay, thank you. I'll continue. So it's it's the emphasis now is um, on singularized learning, one on one, personalized, individualized, uh, and then it is also changed in a different way. Uh, the concept of the Macaulayan or the, the type of learning that we had, well, I had, and maybe many of you had, which was a mass learning based on certain set syllable. Syllabus, syllabi, one, one size fitting all is also changing. One size doesn't fit all any longer. I, I can, when I was young, uh, when I was very young, uh, tailors came to our house, measured out the shirt and stitched the shirt. It was a very personalized form of, uh, you know, stitching your clothes. And then the world changed. You, 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 I, I remember the time my father bought me my first ready-made shirt. It, it, was, it was very thrilling to go to a shop and buy a, uh, buy a shirt that fitted me. But things have changed again. Ready-mades are going out of fashion. It's, it's again the individualized the tailor are coming and measuring out your clothes made for you. That is what the fashion world is coming into. And that's what, what, what the future of learning is. From the sort of mass learning that Macaulay introduced, and I'm, I'm no way crit critical of it. It was necessary for that change. Today, we are going to a much more individualized one-on-one -on -one learning where one, one uh, size doesn't fit all. Each person can choose the size, each child, each learner, everyone, everywhere can 
choose the type of learning he or she wants. And that is what uh, the future of learning is. This means that the type of classroom that we have might also change. What the classroom, what the teacher, what all of you in Craft World School International will have to do more and more in the future is not, uh, you're not going to provide the learning. It'll be a part of it, no doubt. But you're going to provide the child on the, on, 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 on uh, learning how to learn. You're not providing the learning, but teaching the child how to learn and the child goes out for itself to learn. Learning on one's own is what the future of learning will be. The child will be strengthened, would be capacitated, would be provided or in the word is this, empowered to find out more and more about what it wants to know. Going out, a form of a little research. I mean, when you talk of research, you think of PhDs and doctorates, which is very right. But a child can also do research in its own little way in this world that we are living, online world that we are living. And that is what a school like Craft School will provide in the future, I believe. The, the input or, the, or, or teach the uh, child how to learn by itself. And that's very important. Well, learning, uh, I don't have to tell you about learning, you know it more than me. The system of learning that we had was largely, as I think, uh, as I think uh, Ms. Bintu Menon mentioned, was largely visual, a teacher standing there and uh, oral, auditory. Um, you wrote on the board or you read from a textbook or, or you lecture. The word is, lecture is a very auditory sort of word, you lecture. And then, of course, you wrote. Uh, down notes, or, and then you, uh, or you wrote in position, and that's how you learn. But today, that learning is also changing. It is, as they call, uh, it's, it's much more tactile learning, dancing. Uh, is you learn with your whole body movement. It's 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 your your whole body moves. You you're a part of it. The kinesthetic form of learning is what will happen in the future, and and all these will continue in different forms, different proportions, but. The, the tactile learning, I think, will get more and more prominent as uh, online, and I'll come to that later, the virtual uh, classes and augmented learning and um, uh, comes to the whole. Uh, so there, there, is, there will be that sort of a differentiated package where tactile learning will be much more uh, than, than auditory learning than visual learning and so on, and even written learning. And all this will combine in different proportions as the future goes on. The focus, uh, since, since artificial intelligence can do many of the things that we as humans do today, the focus will in future in teaching will be on creativity. I think that's what uh, Craft World School is doing, discovering on your own what uh, they have interest in a child, discovering what he has interest in and learning more about it. And that, uh, the, the interest area of the child is then the area where the teacher will give emphasis. And as I said earlier, help the child to learn by encouraging it to go and learn for itself in the area that it wants to learn. It could be anything. Uh, 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 creativity is fueled by curiosity. We're all born curious. As a child, we are much more curious than as adults. But it is that curiosity which leads to creativity. And you make mistakes on the way and the role of the school, the role of the child, the role of learning, the role of teaching is to be able to tell the child that failures are part of life. That, that Edison, I believe, uh, if, if I remember stories from my childhood, uh, tried a million times and failed to, to, to get a proper electric uh, bulb made and then thousands and thousands of failures. And then we have light in our rooms because he persisted. So the, the, it is that sort of outward external encouragement uh, through guiding the child that the future of learning will take. Technology is going to change learning. I don't have to tell you that. It was mentioned already by, uh, by Bindu and others. Artificial intelligence is going to be a huge area in the future. And artificial intelligence is going to replace many of the things human beings are today doing. Learning will come to the home or to the classroom or, or to your wherever you are through virtual reality. Uh, which, uh, which in a way is already there to some extent. But what is more important is that areas like augmented reality. The augmented reality is where, uh, as an example, you're teaching how the heart works. Uh, and, and augmented reality provides a hologram uh, 
of the heart right in front of you. Uh, you those of you who you watch the 24 news channel, sometimes they have these holograms coming up on your screen. Uh, you see uh, the newscaster who is, uh, say, in, in, in Chennai, standing in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the studio. That's augmented reality. And, and for example, the pumping of the heart, the augmented reality will show exactly how today we learn it by reading or by sketches or by diagrams. And augmented reality will bring it in front of the child. The child can actually see how the heart pumps, how the ventricle contracts, and the blood flows out and the blood comes in, or the, how the kidney, kidney functions. If you're interested in outer space, how the stars move, how the solar eclipse is formed or the lunar eclipse is formed. So this augmented reality is going to be where, where something close to reality comes in front of you um, and, and provides you the exact way in which these things happen uh, becomes, uh, will, will take over uh, teaching and therefore learning. And they can do so, and the child will be able to do so, which, uh, which, uh, uh, which I'll come to that later, perhaps, very quickly, at, at its own pace. And also, I think, in the process of learning, the uh, a blockchain, which you may have heard about, which is a way, which is, which is a, use, normally uses a financial instrument, which might even replace banks in the future, but which ensures that once something is put into the blockchain, nobody can change it. Nobody, it can't be forged because everybody who is a part of that blockchain is a, is a witness uh, uh, to what has been put in there. So if I score, if, I, if, I, if it, in my master's I've scored only 25 marks, I can't fudge it and try to get a degree out of it. So the blockchain technology will become more and more a part of education by which, uh, maybe not in schools, but in, in higher university education, by which your, uh, your, your, the way you progress is once and for all blocked in that chain and nobody can get a degree as we hear people get these degrees without uh, really writing an exam properly. So that will become a part of the, of, of the learning or the, um, uh, or the accreditation to learning process. Similarly, one of the things you might have heard, I don't know how many, the internet of things, my laptop speaking to your laptop, my car speaking to your car, my plane speaking to the other plane so that crashes are avoided. The Internet of Things, things speaking to each other, things using Internet to be able to speak to each other. They offer a more streamlined sort of communication between the parents, the mother and the father and the students. Uh, the, 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 the parent is able to look at, see what is happening uh, in the child's laptop or the child's smartphone. Uh, uh, the, the, the child's, uh, if the child is digressing and these, these are so many temptations online, the parent through the, the smartphone of the child will speak to the smartphone of the father or the mother or the teacher, uh, alerting them that uh, this is not what should be happening, but the child is going astray or seeing things what he should not be seeing at that age. So uh, these are the things that the future will bring as far as uh, the future of learning and future of teaching, future of learning and future of teaching are interconnected or are concerned. Now about virtual learning, though I said, describe it in detail. I personally think that virtual learning uh, and I'm not speaking of augmented reality and other things that are very useful, but the sort of online learning that we have, I really feel that it may not be suited, in my personal opinion, may not be really suited to schools and children at a very young age. I think it would be very suited for universities. If I'm doing a PhD, if I'm doing a master's in physics, it would be wonderful uh, to turn out at a higher, maybe plus two or college and beyond. But at the school levels, I think the sort of inter-peer relationships between child and child of the same age, that becomes very important. That is as much a part of learning, as much a part of the future of learning as, as teaching is. Uh, so the real reality, not the virtual reality, is I think very important for a child, at least till it is, uh, let's say 14, 15, or till certainly till it's 12, 13. So that is, whereas virtual reality, many of the things that is, uh, the technology will bring in, will be extremely useful at the university level, at the research level, at, at uh, at the master's level. Uh, now, the advantage of these technologies is the second part of today's topic, that is the future of learning for everyone, everywhere. Technology will make what was an exclusive, privileged, gurukula type of system, something that is available for everybody, everywhere, and that will, uh, will make a very big difference. And the future of education will, uh, will therefore not take place, except for the schools I mentioned, 
not in the classroom. The classroom as we know it, a building, brick and mortar building might quite disappear. It will, it will, it will uh, take place at a time I need. I am free now. I want to learn. I download and learn or, or bring the augmented reality uh, into my bedroom or in my car, into my drawing room and I learn, and we learn. That's a type of classroom. And I'm not speaking of schools uh, yet uh, because there's this sort of peer learning is very important. The class, but, but in the universities and so on, I think the type of classroom, the brick and mortar cement and uh, classroom that we know about might quite disappear, might go uh, out of fashion, might economically be unviable. People may not come there because these technologies, at least at the highest, nobody likes a lockdown. Uh, a university is a sort of a lockdown. You're locked there between nine and five. You go to listen to lectures. You have to, uh, uh, you know, 10 to 11 is physics, uh, 11 to 12 is human, whatever. That sort of a lockdown, it'll be a lockdown free world of education, learning in the future, self paced. I want, I'm free today, I want to learn more. So I download what I can and learn more today. Tomorrow I'm not feeling well, I don't go, I, I don't learn very much. So the sort of lock up in which a classroom is, especially at the university college level, that we are all so used to, we went through that process, might change in the future. And classrooms might disappear altogether. And that's also useful for children with, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, with who may not be fast learners, children with attention disorders, etc. This sort of a first learning might be useful for them, even at a younger age, even in schools. Let me conclude by, I think I've nearly reached the end of my time, by speaking a couple of words to the parents here. Uh, I think it's very important. The parents have a major role in this future of learning. Uh, learning is going to be very different from the way you and I learn. I think you should, when children question, we should encourage them. Uh, a child is curious to learn, as I said. Uh, and understand how the world around him works, relationships, how things don't work, why is this and why is that. Uh, so encourage the child to question. And, and when you give him a, an answer or give her an answer, if the child questions your answer, so be it. It's a learning process for you as well. You might be wrong. You can look up and think that knowledge of changing is, is changing by the second. So encourage the child to question. Encourage the child to question the answers you give. Encourage the child to question the questions. This can go, uh, uh, that's how we, 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 we our curiosity uh, is, the child's curiosity is, uh, is fulfilled and the child learns. The child becomes creative. And very important also to encourage the child in the areas of his interest or his skill. And I'm very glad that's what the school is called, the craft works, the craft school. Uh, and that's very interesting because I, initially when I heard the name, I, I, I was not quite sure what it meant. But that is what it is, encouraging your skill. A craft is the skills with your hand. And that is what it is. So it could be music, it could be painting, it could be dancing, it could be singing. Uh, I saw this film called Pushpa the other day. Uh, the singing and the song, the dancing and the steps. It could be that the child is enthralled by it. Uh, mathematics, cricket, football, who knows, software, rocket building, anything. So it is that curiosity as a parent that you should encourage and, and, and propel the creativity that is latent in him or her. One more word to the parents, especially because the school is named CAP School. Um, one of the things, at least in my generation, perhaps in your generation, we had this thing, this bias, it's good to be a doctor, an engineer, great to be an IAS or IPS officer. I'm wearing a blue collar. But it was the white collar that, was, uh, that we all wanted our children to be, a white collar job, a software, a white collar job. Nobody wanted our children to work with their hands, skills, craft. I think the future of learning also is in building skills, skills with the finger, skills with the hand, skills with... Uh, and so craft, I think, is very important. Skill learning is very important. And if you're a child, wants to take a course which is based on a skill, so be it. Uh, the word vocation school uh, education has become a bad word and nobody wants to do that. I think that should, the future of learning should disabuse our thinking that a blue collar is something bad and white collar is what it is all about. So I think the perception that learning skills is inferior. I think we should try to disabuse our minds of it and encourage your children, if they're so interested, to, to take to skills uh, and so on. This, there is this, this underturned social hierarchy of white collar and blue collar jobs. I think that should, you, you should, at least the next generation should not have that 
bias. We we grew up with that bias. We should not have that bias. This is my advice. I think I've reached my time. I think I can see we're heading 745. So that is what it is. I very quickly sum up. Then we started with Gurukulas, and then we went to mass learning. The Gurukulas system was very privileged for only for a few, but then it was individualized and was personalized. Bakhalian system of mass school education provided uh, much more uh, opportunities for learning for everyone and mostly everywhere, but then it was not individualized and it was not personalized. But today, the world uh, has become our teacher because of, because of internet, because of the world wide web. Internet is God, individualized, uh, uh, singularized learning on a massive scale is now possible and is happening. And that's the future of teaching and learning. The world has become one huge interconnected uh, uh, internet, in the, in the inter, interconnected, um, you know, guru, with billions of gurus providing the responses and answers to the queries that we have. Uh, and it's, it's, the world has become a huge guru, the world has become a huge ashram. The classroom will become in the future much more much more uh, visual, much more auditory, and, and, and most importantly, much more tactile, much more kinesthetic dancing, music, surgery, and so on. Creativity is what is important in the future, and I think because most of the mundane tasks can be taken up by robots and, and artificial intelligence, so creativity will be important, and that is what we should encourage in our children. Uh, we, should, um, we should look at various aspects. The future will be uh, a, a, a future of learning, will be virtual learning, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, and of course, uh, keeping record of your child's learning or my learning or your learning and our progress becomes a part of the blockchain technologies so nobody can tamper with it. And then, as I said, uh, the internet of things will be a play, bigger, play a bigger price, part in, in future learning. I give the example of the child's phone, smartphone, warning your smartphone that the child is not now uh, he has gone into Facebook or he has gone into other areas, uh, less traveled. So that's the sort of change that will take place. The classroom of the future, I think schools will have to be in the classroom because of the peer learning. But more and more universities, the sort of huge, massive buildings that constitute universities today, I think they'll, they'll disappear. If not in 10 years, 20, 30, 40 years, they'll disappear. Uh, and uh, it will be replaced by this global ashram, the global gurukul where you can learn at your pace and so on. Might not happen in the school very much, but that's how it is. And the parents have a very important role to encourage that creativity uh, of the child to, to develop it uh, and carrying it forward in the area it wants to go. The child leads and you follow, that's it. But in, in my case, my, my father, my parents led and I followed. In our case, I'm sure that is how it happens. But in the future, learning the future, the world is changing. We can't compare yesterday's world to today's world, and certainly not to tomorrow's world. But let the child lead and you follow. I think uh, I've taken more than my time, but it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. I hope I made sense, and I hope I've given um, uh, 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 a sort of a perspective on the future of learning uh, for everyone, everywhere. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So usually what happens is that whenever the guest speaker speaks, uh, you know, I would summarize, uh, but then again, you've already summarized, but still I would like to add on a few points to whatever you have uh, uh, shared with us today. One is like when you started, there was so much of happiness when you said that you're from Kotuvali, uh, you know, so much attached to, to the place. And, you know, I think the entire Crawford school, uh, they just love that moment. Uh, I think that moment would be cherished forever. And then the gurukulam system where guru coming to the child, uh, child's home, uh, you know, is something uh, new learning, wherein I, I don't think we would have thought about that, the guru coming to the child's home. And it was saying children, uh, the teachers cannot fool around with children anymore because they're more knowledgeable than us. And then, um, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a global gurukula, you know, uh, wherein the facilitators, basically teachers uh, have started calling them the facilitators, uh, connected with, uh, uh, with an internet that, uh, you know connection and then uh, more of customized programs like if you look at it uh, you know future of learning now it's like more of certification programs uh, short term programs and things like that is going to be future you were saying skill based learning and the teachers are to be empowered more otherwise they are not going to survive because 
every child is going to be really really unique and the interest levels are going to be unique uh, the the skill levels are going to be unique yeah and um, extrinsic and intrinsic motivation you were talking about we actually discussed this in the last uh, uh, teachers uh, grooming session too so that was very important um and 24 by 7 learning and we are you would, i i i i'm i'm sure that uh, uh, nobody would have explained these um, technical terms so very simple like you did it today uh, you know with such uh, you know what a simple examples you were able to convey what uh, these uh, are uh, you know the the future tech is all about and the way you explain the blockchain the way you explain the ar and things so that the other example you came up with for the iot uh, you know beautiful so thank you so very much and we're talking about in fact uh, you know i was just waiting for you waiting that you would come up with a metaverse but then again i think you reached a time and then you were not able to cover yeah right you're not <laughs> able to touch base that it was, it was i was waiting for that example from your side just eagerly waiting yeah okay right it, it was in my script uh, with the, but i I, so, i thought i was running out of time so i exactly I, I, i knew it i knew it yes sir yeah then um I, for parents learning at their own own pace i mean uh, allowing children to learn at their own pace and parents you know allowing the children to ask more questions encouraging them and then allowing them to explore what is go- what is going to happen at most i mean let them explore and learn right i mean and uh, the white collar jobs which you're talking about uh, i i perfectly agree with sir because nowadays more of skill based learning and then when the changes in the last two years what has happened is that most of them with white collar jobs have lost their job only those skill based jobs are available and people who are surviving are the ones who are with skills and then i'll, I'll just give an example for uh, you know nowadays if you look at content writers uh, i'm also supposed to be w- one of them right so if you look at it there is a app which has come in wherein most of the content writers are going to lose their job because you just give the context and then the it will come up with the content uh, for that so likewise most of the white collar jobs are going to be you know vanishing uh, in thin air and then skills are going to be the reality of the future so thank you so very much uh, for the insight uh, shared with us today thank you sir time for q and a um, uh, let's start uh, with the parents uh, um, ms lasita srilal mother of samast who is an administrator at light breeze infotech Uh, over to you ma'am ms lasita shiral yeah thank you ma'am uh, sir so my question, question is so, uh, yes, yeah. yeah an important lesson learned during the pandemic is the need to close the digital divides and about the critical role of teachers and parents would you please add on your thoughts on how are this going to contribute the future learning uh, yes i agree with you completely uh, that there is a need to uh bridge the uh, uh, the digital divide the digital divide is a great barrier in human resource development in the future uh we have uh, if not completely bridge it we should be able to make the gap much more narrower i'm not a technology expert but i believe that 5g for example uh which is the latest we are moving from 4g to 5g can help in the reduction of this uh, digital divide to a large extent uh, but i think most importantly there is need to be a policy at the state level at the government of india level enabling financial and technological inputs to make uh, make uh, to, to, to digitize uh, more and more to provide provide uh, connectivity the last mile connectivity the last foot connectivity uh, so that every child ha- is able to uh, able to go to that worldwide gurukul that i spoke about you can do that only if you have uh, if if you have that connectivity so while we speak of for example cities like kochi being smart cities that's fair enough but that's not enough we should make uh, uh, the district a smart district we should make the state a smart state we should make the country a smart country uh, a, a child in the most backward village in bihar or orissa should be able to connect uh, to the world uh, to this gurukul ashram to this global ashram that i spoke about and that's very important uh kerala needs to be a smart state adrakulam needs to be a smart district and india needs to be uh, a smart country where co- connectivity is 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 available uh, like that thank you so much
Thank you, Ms. Rasita Srilal. Thank you, sir, for that. Now, uh, now it's a turn. Uh, Ms. Padmaja Ram Govind, mother of Kashi Greto, who's a homemaker. Ms. Padmaja, please. Good evening, sir. Today's uh, students and parents in today's are heavily focused on end results. So my question is, uh, why we are grading and for whom we are grading? And do exams really prepare our children for end results? Uh, madam, uh, I would answer this both yes and no. You see, there's a competitive spirit in all of us. It's built into our genes. Uh, higher, taller, faster, quicker, longer, and so on. Motto Olympic. I don't remember the exact one, but uh, all this, all this, I don't know. that competition is built into our genes. And perhaps that is why we have also survived. Uh, to come first, to be on top, that's in our blood. So, and also, the world is a very competitive thing. Uh, that we should remember. Competition is built into everything, everywhere. Getting job, in politics, in business, in sports, it's all there. Therefore, training our children to be competitive is not a very bad thing altogether. The question is, when should we begin this training? And that is where, when should we start training our children to be competitive? You start them too early and then you, 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 your mind gets boggled down. Uh, you start too late, perhaps, then he loses or she loses in the competitive world. Now, if you, I don't know how many of you are aware of the new government, uh, government's new education policy, that gives a slight insight into the matter. It says children should learn, uh, start going to preschool, pre KG at the age of three, and uh, you know, uh, three years in preschool, uh, and then grade one and grade two, five years from the age of six, or from the age of six they start. So uh, six plus five is about eleven, and then there are grade three, four, and five uh, in in the in the uh, in the primary. So altogether, five plus three, eight years. Now, if you're starting at uh, age of six, eight plus six will be about 14. Now, I think competition certainly should not happen uh, till the age of 11 or 12, and maybe built in afterwards. Uh, maybe after 14, 15 is the right time to start competition. Early competition might, uh, I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, I'm a psychologist, but the child won't understand what it is. Even though the child has an inherent ability to say, I, 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 I did this, I'm on top, I came first. That's there in all of us. But I think it's best developed at a later age. And it is it's also very dangerous not to develop that because it's a competitive world. You're going to be outshone. You're going to be outrun. You're going to be, you're, you're going to be defeated uh, in everything that I do, whether it's politics or learning or, or running or jumping or, or, or business or, or in the courts, uh, referring to advocate, Majid, a anywhere, if you, are not, if you are not that competitive. But maybe it should come in place. I think yes, the competition yes. is actually not with the, the children, but with the parents. What do we do about that, sir? Well, the competitive if spirit. the parents are not competitive, if the parents, if the, the parents are here before us, I'm here because I was competitive. I'm sure you are there because you're competitive. The parents have joined craft school, put their children in craft school because they were competitive and came to a certain level. Competition is the parents uh, 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 provide that, uh, that spark of competition. My father advised me from day one, uh, I mean, perhaps from very early in age, that I should write the civil service, the IA. Maybe, but too early can also put you off. So that, that, then I decided I won't write the IA. I joined the State Bank of India as a probationary officer, but that job was such a terrible job that I remember my father's work and wrote the uh, civil service again. But uh, too early, it, it starts bogging on you. And that's what I would say, let the child be a, you know, a, a teenager, well into his teenage. 15, 16, 17, before putting this competitive spark in uh, the child. Uh, too early, perhaps, I don't know, it might. Uh, but then when you look at the channels, and I yeah, see one channel having this. Yeah, yeah so then, then yeah. Uh, maybe we're carrying it to, to extremes, everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. But don't forget competition, that's very important. Yeah, yes, right, very important. Yeah, Thank you, Definitely. sir. Thank you, Ms. Padmaja. Uh, over to Ms. Mridula. Yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, I just want to add up to what you have been saying just now about the assessments and all. That's why I think Craft World School has been going in a really balanced way where we don't have these monthly tests, but we do uh, definitely have these term exams. 
so that parents will definitely understand where the kids are and children would be exposed to some kind of assessments or challenges or these kind of things but not too much like the other schools where they actually assess each and every time for each and every topic so maybe we can take it in a balanced way where you were saying like assessments are really required you were saying this both and so yes and no so i guess we have uh, been uh, we are in the right track the kafka school is actually going in the right track Uh, yeah. I, I, if I may interrupt you there, I'm told Walluvali and Kottavali were Buddhist villages, and Buddha always said the middle path. It's good. <laughs> yeah. The middle path. That's what. So we are actually in between an ICSC and CBSE school. So I guess everything is now balanced there at, at the place Kottavali. We are directly opposite to the uh, Kottavali village officer, and it was yeah, uh, really a cherished, cherished moment. Just now, how was uh, Bindu Ma'am was saying? It was definitely a delight for all of us to know that. You are your roots are there, so definitely when we pass through uh, your house, the Melancholy House, we'll be we'll be definitely thinking about you each and every day. Call the Melancholy and Clay, I think. Ah, uh, yeah. The, I guess we have seen the house uh, when we passed by many times. Thank you so much for disclosing that, sir. So um, yeah, I was uh, thinking about what all you have been saying, and we completely resonate with you. And most of the existing policies of the school are uh, definitely uh, what you have been saying. Not only the future of learning, few of the policies we have been doing it right now itself, like uh, learning not only in the classroom, sitting under the tree and learning, and having all these kind of different way of learning, like interviewing the experts, going for field studies, and also those policies, those kind of uh, learning methods are already adopted. in our school so i think we are definitely in the track of this future learning and uh, we uh, i really agree with this vasudeva kudumbagam uh, concept where we have been following this from the earlier age itself now we are going back to that kind of age and thanks to technology and how technology have taken uh, you know shaken hands with all this kind of uh, education sector and all and you have thrown light to most of the things that uh, future is going to take and uh, don't know whether our lifetime we are we will be lucky enough to you know uh, face all this in our lifetime anyway very happy that our kids are going to face all this uh, so sir i just have a small uh, question to you uh, like education is not a one shot game like uh, earlier times it's going to be a lifelong process so uh, to ensure a healthy teaching and learning process we need to make sure that the whole teaching career or the teaching profession should be uh, socially valued and that teachers and school leaders like me should have the tools support professional development opportunities and expectations they need to be effective so what is your take on this pre service training needs uh, to involve all these opportunities for this extensive practice as uh, these kids are getting smarter day by day and they are all unique in their own ways so definitely we teachers are also human so we need to get this kind of in service training that needs to be tailored and focused on improving this instruction led teaching process uh, so what is your take on this i i fully agree with you mr but i i make i you said watch the work couldn't sir i think it's going to be watch the work gurukula uh, okay. it's a little change <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the phrase can be changed. Yeah. Half a joke and half fun. But what you say is very true. Uh, you see, uh, during the Gurukula system, which we are talking about so much, the teacher was the embodiment of all that was right, and the way he lived, the way he uh, uh, spoke, everything was 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 teaching and learning. Uh, the teacher had the most paramount place uh, apart from God. Uh, but then, post independence, for some years after independence, also the teaching profession had a lot of. Uh, lot of uh, respect my mother was a headmistress by the way in a common school uh, she she retired uh, many years ago but then the teaching profession had a lot of uh, lot of uh, respect and i think but then maybe in the last 30 40 years uh, for various reasons we started losing respect as a society to teachers but i'm glad to say that if you look at the last 5 7 years 8 years 10 years the respect is really coming back also perhaps because um, because today teachers are getting better salaries they are more respected and they themselves are, uh, uh, are are beginning to understand that their role is much more important than uh, than what was perceived in the past so i suppose the sort of pre and during training so uh, a training is very important uh, i believe again i'm referring to the new education policy it speaks of uh, training uh, you know young teachers in in the lower classes anganwadi teachers or kindergarten teachers on early childhood care and education uh, that that has become a compulsory part of uh, being able to be a teacher in the lower grades 
uh, the ECCE uh, for teachers of Anganwadi. And, and they have to be trained, they have to be provided uh, pedagogical inputs, they have to be provided in service training are all mentioned in the new education policy. I'm not sure how much of it is going to get implemented, but if it gets implemented, it's a very good thing. Similarly, the new education policy speaks about the four-year uh, four uh, integrated BA program. Uh, for the, it's a four-year thing where you, you are uh, you are provided knowledge, you are provided content, pedagogy, uh, includes practical training and things. And by 2013, by 2013, I believe uh, uh, the minimum uh, uh, degree qualification will be this four-year BA training. So I think we are that circle is coming again, where we are beginning to pay a lot more respect to our teachers, which is as necessary. And I, I see the future of teaching as as a as uh, getting back that a noble character it once had. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm very positive mm -hmm. it's happening. And all of you, for example, mm, uh, Madam Luthada, you're sitting there and talking, uh, and the other teacher who welcomed, all that provides me with the confidence that we are moving in that direction. I'm sure we will get extremely good teachers in the future. Remember, uh, as Radha Krishnan was a teacher before he became vice president. True, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So that discrimination of that blue collar and white collar jobs are being, you know, lighter and lighter now. And most of the technologists, oh. they are actually coming back to this blue collar job. Same way, uh, these mediocre teachers have been leaving the sector and now the well-versed, the well-educated um, personnel have been rejoining the teaching sector these days. So hopefully what you have been seeing is uh, exactly in the right direction. So let's hope for the best. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mridula. Thank you, sir. Now, it's like I've got a couple of questions from uh, the audience, but then again, uh, most of the questions you've already answered. Uh, so I uh, just have two left here. The first question is, um, learners experience joy when their skills are stretched with challenging but possible tasks and learning happens when there is a continuous practice and effort. How do we address the sharp difference in school and home environments in a country? Very simple, compulsory, free, universal, high quality education. Uh, education is the basis of uh, human resource development. Now, if you do not provide free, high quality education to everyone, this will, difference will continue. And that's a sad difference. You have in India today, I'm not speaking so much of Kerala because we are much more literate. But in India today, you have the educated and then you have the uneducated. And there's a vast difference between them. Human resource uh, can, is, is, is vital in, in future for uh, an individual to progress, a family to progress, a village, a town, a district to progress, for the state to progress, for the country to progress. So very simply, compulsory, and I use the word compulsory, free, I emphasize free, universal, everybody, every child to leave 17 or 18 should be provided high quality education. Uh, I'm free when I, when I say free, those who can afford it should yeah. certainly pay, I'm, I'm speaking for the poorer section, should be provided that. That is the only way to, 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 to bridge this bridge sharp this. divide, as you say. Yes, but that's right. very important. Great, and the last question is, learners, teachers, learning resources, schools, and system management. How can we carry out investments and reforms in these five pillars that ensures future of learning for everyone everywhere? Again, very simple. Put the money where it is needed. It's, it's all, yeah. It is needed in educating every child in the country. Now, uh, uh, now uh, there was, uh, I remember another question that I read, which, uh, which also was there, which said something like, uh, where does it say, um, uh, Learning poverty is likely uh, to be in the high and low. Income. The, right. is, Get it. Yeah. Uh, well, I see the other way around. It's not, uh, you know, learning poverty doesn't happen in low and middle income schools, mm -hmm. uh, in low and middle income countries. Low and middle income countries happen because there is learning poverty. You, okay. a country is poor because of mm -hmm. because the children are not being. Children are not educated. You look at it. Right. 
Yeah, you you look at any country. You look at the U.S. Everybody goes mm-hmm. to school. It's a rich country. Look at Japan. Everybody goes to school. It's a rich country. South Korea. Everybody goes to school. China. In the last thirty years, it put everybody to school. It's a rich country mm-hmm. today. Look at Africa. Nobody sends their children to school. Sudan, Somalia, and the poor countries. Education and poverty are interrelated. You stand on uh, what Kaidaram uh, Kavala and uh, catch hold of ten people who are uh, who look. Uh, uh, not very rich, poor, nine out of the 10 of them would not have learned very much. You stop 10 cars where people are traveling uh, fairly rich and uh, find out their education, they would all be educated. There's this direct link between education and uh, poverty or education and wealth. You're educated, you're wealthy. You're not educated, you're unwealthy. So put your money where it is needed. Put uh, government money where it is in educating every child. My, I don't know, at the time, my grandfather uh, in Waluwali, he sent my father to uh, the, the only English medium school those days, I don't know, right, yeah. school. So he, he could speak English very well, and uh, he, he was in the Indian economic service. And then once you educate one generation, the education follows. It, it, if my yeah, grandfather it, had not done that, my father would yeah. have been climbing trees. I would be climbing trees. He would not have invited me for the talk. So it is, it's very important. Yeah, to right. Do that. So and this moment wouldn't have educated. happened. This yeah. moment wouldn't have happened. I was not right? educated. He, was, he just studied for standard. He couldn't write the accounts of his business. So you, who are Kanakan or somebody who kept the accounts, would come once a week and write the accounts from what he told in his memory. And then he decided that this is not good. I should educate my son. And that's how it So put your money where it is needed, education. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now it's time for uh, the speaker's feedback. So your your feedback on the session, please. My feedback. Yes, sir. What do you? What, I what think do you, you should. Feel? You should give me what? your feedback on this. <laughs> I think Ms. Mridula has the right. I've been doing all the talking. Yes, sir. No, you it, can it say that. Ta- how, how did you? Very well. Okay. Did... Thank you so much. Yeah, you made me think. By the way, I learned a lot today uh, by uh, by being with you. Learning is ever continuing process. You learn uh, till the day you die or till you decide not to learn. So for me, it's been a learning experience. The future of learning is holding more things like this. I mean, it's, it, it educates everybody. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Ms. Mithila, from your side. Yes, ma'am. That's what I just told, uh, just before asking the question, I just told him how we have been feeling as Craft World School. It's really an honor and privilege. For all of us, you have your uh, one hour of time, more than an hour actually. We have taken your time and thank you so much for how Bindu Ma'am was saying to put, uh, you know, you just put across all the um, the most uh, difficult uh, technologies that actually um, the, our future uh, children are going to face in a very, very simple way. So even the kindergartners would understand what is this augmented reality is, what is this artificial intelligence. You just gave us the proper examples of this even uh, the 24 years. I've never seen a seen someone explaining blockchain like this. This is the first yeah, time. Exactly. So yeah. simple. You know, I was just thinking, can someone explain blockchain in, in s- s- such a simple term? I mean, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So you have been tracking all this all the way, sir. So definitely this session is uh, definitely recorded and it's going to be a, how to say, a benchmark for uh, the children to see and uh, listen to what um, the great Mr. M.P. Joseph has already lectured in history about the future of learning. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for your time and putting across all the thoughts, everything in a very simple way where you all teachers are so much overwhelmed with the, your way of describing things. So I think we should have some kind of training or coaching from you. Right, teachers? What do you all feel? <laughs> Just in our session, we are all so much uh, educated, right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's that's correct. Yes, thank you, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank ma'am. you, Ms. Mithula. May I now invite Ms. Harika Vipin, teacher with Craft World School, to deliver the word of thanks, please. Good evening to all. On behalf of CWS team, it's my privilege to propose a word of thanks uh, on this uh, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, it's my privilege to propose a word of thanks on this occasion. Uh, we are so grateful to our distinguished guest speaker, Mr. M.P. Joseph, sir, for uh, not only sparing his valuable time for us, but also for enlightening us with his commentable talk on the subject. Thank you, sir, 
for clearing our concepts and enhancing our understanding uh, pertaining to the future of learning for everyone and everywhere and making this webinar thoughtful. I owe special gratitude to our parents for extending your cooperation and making this webinar a resounding success. Next, I thank our management trustee, Advocate CA Majid sir and Principal Mridila Praveen ma'am for their unstinted support and leadership. Special thanks to Ms. Bindu Menon ma'am for your excellent job in uh, moderating today's webinar. Last but not the least, let me thank our teaching and non-teaching staff for particularly this webinar, participating in this webinar. Thank you all present here. Thank you. Thank you, Sarika. You did great. Okay. Thank you so much. So thank you all for joining us today. It has been a wonderful learning experience. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for joining with us today. Yeah. Know that we took My so pleasure. Minutes, so minutes of so. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. parents. Thank you, thank you Team World School. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph, sir, for this. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. You thank were you. here. I mean, we thought that, uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Advocate Majid. It's a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.